I figured that I can't offend anybody or I'm offending everybody with that uh, title. And that title was given its name by Jim Glass. And many of you know Jim Glass. Or he attends the Tech for Seniors. And he came up with that title because he said, I have all of those problems. And you just tell them that I came up with the title and it is all about accessibility. And I thought he's not going to be offended by anything, but that's the way it goes. So this is help, can't see, can't hear, <clears throat> can't touch. It is really all about accessibility no matter what. And since there's so much a discussion about copyrighted information in presentations and all of a sudden a law firm gets in touch, I've gone to these kinds of graphics on many presentations and they're just words of, you know, that we're going to talk about. And so we're off and running. That's me. I do like to keep busy. We need to make sure that we are preventing giving any kind of accessibility problems. When I was using my 17 inch laptop and I'm really a Toshiba girl and they don't make them anymore. And that makes me very sad, but that was what my setup was on my glass computer table. I took it and put it aside so you didn't get everything else that I had. But computer glasses, I cannot live without computer glasses. And if you look at the diagram to the right, that's where our eyeballs should be from the top of the, our monitor. And if you have them like that, and you still, you know, from back in the old days, use a document holder, uh, they just let you see much better and the reason that that's a good view for you is you can just sit there and look about an inch, inch and a half, two inches from the um, keyboard, the monitor up there. And then you see where your eyeballs go to your document platform or straight down next to your keyboard. And with that, I'm not going to do that when it says somebody wants to come in. And... The way it is, is I can look straight ahead and then I just rotate my eyeballs around. I don't have to be doing this or this and just move my eyes. Doesn't hurt my neck because I'm not moving my head around and straining my neck. You, should need, you can have the padding in front of your keyboard, but you really don't use it unless you, you want to take a break. Then you can just put your wrists down on it and that works great and if you want to go out and buy a footrest because you need to have your feet up uh higher whatever you know you can use a paper box lid and it works just fine instead of going out and buying paying money for it you need to adjust your chair so your thighs are parallel to the floor you need to have a adjustable seat back support for your lower back. You need keyboards at elbow height for your arms. Your shoulders should be aligned correctly. Um, all that good kind of stuff. We forget about this. We have been doing this for so many years that it's just kind of, if we have developed bad habits, then we sit down, we turn everything on, you get ready to go. And you go, oh, you know, my back, my shoulders, like they're hurting a little bit. Well, you've forgotten how you should be sitting so you don't get carpal tunnel. Or I had a tennis elbow at, when I worked at Cigna. And I thought that was the funniest thing known to man because I am the least athletic person in the whole world. And just for me to be able to say, ah, I have tennis elbow, that is so strange. And that's what the MD and the chiropractor both said the same thing. Didn't say you had carpal tunnel, you didn't have this, you didn't have that. I, who is non-athletic, got the name carpal tunnel, also known as 
tennis elbow. So accessible assistive tech has been designed for the needs of many different users, short folks, tall people, overweight people, skinny people, you name it. You can get it and depending upon how you're sitting, you know, where your legs are, where your thighs are, the whole nine yards. So we're going to take a look of kind of a whole bunch of stuff that may or may not, you might have all of it. You might be one of these lucky people that you, you know, you only have one piece of this. Uh, the fact that, gee, I didn't know that I could put, you know, my eyeballs an inch and a half, two inches from the top of my screen, and I can just move my eyes around. I don't have to be creaking my neck or something like that. That might be the one thing that you don't, you've forgotten about or you didn't know it in the first place. So I always say, hope you learn at least one new thing. Somebody needs to let Clark Walker in. He's in the waiting room. So you might want to think about learning how to create accessible documents. All of the uh, things that you need to know is, you know, right there in front of your eyes. And I got an invitation from North Texas. They talked up their board meeting and they said, will you please contact Judy and see if she put a, uh, an accessibility presentation together. And I thought, oh, could you think of somebody else's name other than mine? And no, so I put it together and found out that by golly, since almost the beginning of time when I was working with people on how to, you know, be better situated, arms don't get tired, car carpal tunnel doesn't get tired, whole nine yards, and what is carpal tunnel? You know, we have to find out about that. And so I got a, the request from North Texas and I said, Give me a couple of months and I'll put it together. And so that was my email to them. And it says, by golly, no accessibility issues were found. I thought that was way cool because like I said, this is kind of the way I have always been to put presentations together. I do this automatically, whether it's somebody who's an expert, maybe they'll get a tip or two, Maybe it's the first time they've ever thought about this and didn't realize that you can just go into uh, your Zoom and uh, the whole nine yards and you're ready to go. And this is what it says under accessibility and the alt tasks, text that you can bring in. And I look at the, look at the number of Zoom, 5.78. We are much further along with Zoom than that is. But this is what I said, I'll mock this up for you. And you might want to send this out to your members and guests, you know, whichever, you know, who all you're sending your meeting announcements to. And this is my invitation. And it wasn't tiny little print, it was bigger than normal. And I'm happy with that. Uh, people sometimes, you know, squitch up their eyes, and they can't see things. And you just need to figure out what you all need to check on and you can check on the accessibility of your text. And it was interesting to find out that it was kind of the size of the type, whatever. I was already doing that. Uh, you know, I don't have the best eyes in town. I have, wear bifocals and I've been using Zoom for a thousand years. And Huey and Jim Evans and I got to help a little bit with the Zoom people. And when they were setting it up, I, I, we wanted to kind of put our two cents worth in with Zoom. So Jim Evans and probably Huey along with him, I just went along for the ride. And we started setting this up and voila, we loved it. And now we have a presentation on how we can be happy campers when we are giving a presentation. And the first thing is you have to make the typeface better and bigger. So you're not going, you know, scrunching up your eyes and trying to find out what you need to do. And I've kept this on since 2021. And uh, I find out that uh, it works great for me. 
And a lot of times without me even thinking about it, I have checked all the boxes to make it an automatic uh, accessibility type presentation. And you kind of just get in the groove once you've figured out how to do it. And I hope this presentation can help a little bit with that. And you're off and running and your fingers, that good old muscle memory, and you learn all the little tips and tricks and, oh Lord, I don't like that one. So I'm not gonna include that in any of my presentations or whatever. You start using what works for you and you don't have people saying, you know, Judy, you really need to use a larger font. We can't see it. So I do. And this was, again, no accessibility issues found. I didn't even think about this. I'd been using it, you know, for just a short time, but I did a lot of research when I was putting it together. And I kept that box on there checked that says, please keep the checker running while I work. And it just becomes automatic and you're a happy camper and pat yourself on the back for that. So creating accessible documents, this is with Windows 10 and Windows 11 says the same thing, but a different way. But they both do what they say they're gonna do and boom, you're going right along. So options, ease of access, of course in 11, it's gonna be in a different place, but it does the same thing. So that is lots of fun. So what's re repetitive strain injury? Well, we always talk about usually carpal tunnel. Well, we get it in our hands, our wrists, our arms, our neck, our upper back. One of the worst things that women can do is to um, cross your legs. And you go, really? I'm not supposed to cross my legs, huh? Yeah, that is one of the biggest no-nos for women when they are sitting too long at their computer. Uh, and who knew? that that was absolutely something <clears throat> you should never do. So what's RSI? That's a picture of it right there. The lady was, we were there for senior center and they had some, you know, big band that is really the bogus band, so to speak. And she walked behind me. I didn't even know her. I, in fact, I'd never seen her before. And my daughter's mother-in-law was, I said, do you know that lady? And she said, why? Well, <laughs> she knew I always had something up my sleeve. And I said, yes, I do. And I said, did you have surgery? And she said, yes, I did. And it was really crummy. <laughs> and I'm thinking, she's probably wondering why I asked that presentation. And I said, I'm putting a accessibility presentation together for people who need a little bit of help on whatever. And she said, yeah, it's my surgery. And again, this was at, well after 2021, because I'd already given it a few times. And uh, so she said, it's the pits. It really is. She said, I don't like it being bandaged like this. You know, I thought it was going to be hurt more, but it didn't. It just looks ugly. And I thought, well, if you don't think it's going to hurt, and you've heard so many people say, oh, my God, I had this surgery. And it it's really, really hurt. And she was worried about more, I think, on, you know, than you know, having it done than uh, thinking about having it done, so to speak. And I know at Cigna Healthcare, I worked in the corporate office in Glendale, California, and uh, so, you, you, you know, you had this and she, she looked like that. She says, I have not used my computer in at least two months now. And I thought, oh, my gosh, you, you even have to give up using your computer. Good grief. And so this was interesting to just have her buzz by the back of me and have an opportunity to you know, chat with her about it. And I said, oh, by the way, can I please take your picture? <laughs> She's looking at me like, yeah, sure, lady. But she let me do that. And I know our receptionist at Cigna was classed as uh, a percentage disabled after she had the 
carpal tunnel, so to speak, surgery. And what was interesting is she didn't type. She was left-handed and it was the way she picked up her phone and twisted her arm. It was just horrible to watch her pick up the phone. And she had been the receptionist at Cigna Hospital in downtown LA. And she, you know, twisted her arm around, her hand around, and it really hurt the, what she had done to herself. And she would never, ever, she wasn't interested in learning how to answer, pick up the phone and do it correctly. And I thought, oh gosh, that's unfortunate because you'd be better because she was now, you know, if she left us, where could she go? I mean, she's got di she's got di diagnosed with this now, and it's a bad way to be. And luckily, she's at the senior center, so she's not out really looking for a job. But you think of the younger people that are just, you know, coming out into the work world, and it, everything hurts, and that just really makes them feel bad about that. But you're using wrong posture. You've got the wrong chair. Uh, you're doing the same thing. My son had it and he uh, had a screen print business and it was moving the brush up and down, up and down. And he was getting carpal tunnel and he won. I still use the same thing. You know, you can call it anything. And, uh, but she, he, he was doing the same thing. And he said, you know, Nancy and I are going to get married. I really can't be having a business where it's going to affect my wrists, my hands, my arms, his mother's elbows, and all that good kind of stuff. And so he gave his equipment away and sold and some of his accounts. And he, he this was the dream of his lifetime. And he figured, you know, it's okay for now, but when they get married, he's going to have to make more money. So he took the lead and stopped doing it. So you got all the stuff that are wrong and you can get carpal tunnel, tendonitis, bursitis. I love it. Mouse shoulder. And then there's my ever popular tennis elbow. But there is a diagnosis of mouse shoulder. Don't give a name to anything. So where's the pain? Your hands, your wrists, your neck your shoulders, your upper, your upper, upper back. You need to learn how to sit correctly. Uh, what am I doing? My neck is really starting to hurt me. Well, then you're gonna have to pay attention to some of the things in the presentation so you can know what you're doing wrong because it's the pits. If your shoulders and your elbows hurt and you're thinking this is really weird. So you can set up sticky keys that do certain things. And, you know, using shift, control, alt, or the Windows key, pressing them one key at a time instead of having to go alt, hmm, or whatever, hmm. And uh, you find that, oh, you know, got to remember these new shortcuts so my body can feel a little bit better. With sticky keys for access, you don't need to hold them down. You press one and then you press another one and boom, it doesn't hurt. Benefits users who can't press or have difficulty pressing shortcut key combination. You date back to back in the day when we're perfect that we usually all started out with. Uh, we're the big time uh, shortcut key people because that's what we used. And that this sticky keys works great. We have difficulty pressing shortcut key combinations then you just cut it down to one key for your shortcut. If you press the shift key five times, you turn on your sticky keys and off you go. Low vision monitor touch key pad, pad and you use your device. You're not looking down, there's no physical keyboard. You turn on, use the on-screen keyboard feature and it sits right there in front of your eyes down at the bottom of your monitor. And if you can't use your keys, you use your smartphone, pads, smart pad, and instead of your key. And so all you're doing is holding on and just 
lightly tapping on the keys on your monitor. And you're typing along and you look up and you could go, oh my gosh, everything is in all caps. And then you have to go back and make it go back so you're using it correctly. So you wanna have the sound. As you all of a sudden you look around and all of your work is in all caps. Well, you wanna make sure that the sound is on for when that happens, it gets your attention quickly and you can stop and say, okay, now wh where was that note that I you know, could use my sticky keys or toggle keys or filter keys from the keyboard? I'm gonna have to remember that one because I'm getting so sick and tired of having to retype things, how, how to uh, highlight them and choose, you know, one capital letter, the beginning of a sentence, and you missed that one because, you know, you didn't have your computer glasses on, so you weren't getting the good view of it. But this is a different way, and we might not have any problems with accessibility, but it's just a heck of a lot easier to do. And we all know a little bit about sticky keys, but we're gonna learn more about that. And it's just gonna make our arms and wrists and everything easier to do, easier to access, easier to make it so you don't, it doesn't hurt. And you think, I wish I'd known that a long time ago. You can change the colors. I have used the one on the left. High visibility green is one of my favorite colors with purple. And I tried that and it's really ghastly and thought who would really want to do that? But you can, you could change your colors to the outfit of your day. But the one thing that is important to me is to use the largest setting for my pointer, my mouse, and that makes it easier for me to see on the screen. It makes it easier to see. It's large and I have it all black. And I'm not having to look around at the mouse pointer. It's just right there in front of my eyeballs and it works really well. So you can change all of that stuff. You could change it to match your outfit, you know, whatever makes you happy. You can make it so you just have a single click point to select. And that means, you know, you don't have to double click. Somebody says, oh, I have such a problem with double clicking. Really, oh, it just drives me bananas. Well, why do you have to do two clicks? You can just do one. You can underline the icon titles only when you point at them. You can double click to open a single item. Why? Don't, you know, get your fingers tired. Just single click and boom, you're done. Your cursor speed. I can't tell you how many people have said to me, I can't click it fast. I can't see it. Then you want to grab it and turn, push it to the left and slow it down. How many lines do you want to see at one time? There are some people out there who can't see more than one or two lines. It just absolutely drives them crazy. One person says, I only like to see one line at a time. Another one will say, you know, I like to see three lines at a time when I scroll down. Change it. See what you like and what speed, et cetera, thickness works for you. Customize it all. And you can change the motion, slow, Fast, these are good April Fool's things to, to work with your best friend about it and drive him crazy. Uh, display, display the pointer trails. And as you are moving your mouse around, the little tails are following the mouse. Drives you crazy, but might be easier for you to see that than not.
you can hide your pointer while typing. I would not like that, but that the pointer might drive you crazy. Or you get the location of the pointer, you just press the control key. That's all you have to do. So you don't like it all the time, but every once in a while you tap it and you can see right where your mouse is. You like the low vision, high contrast. Drives me crazy. That's all Bill, Bill James uses, period. My, the Toshiba's back in the day came at 100%. Uh, I've always used 125%. And you can see how small the 100% is. And just 125 makes it a little bit easier. Thickness, make everything bigger, you name it. You customize it on how it works for you. And there's 175. You have to, you know, have kind of a large monitor for that. But again, you can customize every single thing. Somebody can sit down at your computer and go, this is really making me dizzy. It's kind of hard for me to set all this up here. Well, I've been doing 125 forever and works for me. And I don't like the small pointer. I like, again, 125, 150. I don't like the black. Like I say, Bill James loves it. All in the eye of the beholder. Here's your different sizes, 100, 125, 150. And again, this is still Bill's favorite. And that just kind of makes me dizzy when I look at it. It doesn't work. Mainly, I don't like black. So I don't want to have the background being black. Here's my kind of blah one. But my eyes like this better than the black. Here's your small, medium, and large icons. Which one works for you? I'm always the middle one. And here's your desktop there. And again, I'm always 125. That's one of the first things I change is everything that, to do with this kind of stuff. And you make your text bigger. You use the little cursor there and you slide it back and forth until you can find it instantly. It works for you. And the thing is, is it's easy for you to read. Then click on it, apply it, boom, it's done. And you have a guest over and they're going to use your computer and they just look at you and groan and say, ah, oh, there's no way I can do this. And well, you try it two or three times and maybe it is the way you want it to work. You can turn the magnifier on. I have never mastered the magnifier. I'm always, you know, trying to highlight something that I, you know, it drives me crazy. So I stopped working with this, but it's a very handy uh, ease of access. Turning your magnifier on, you can make it a default. You could have it where you can highlight something and it will be a larger. Again, you set it up the way you want to. Do you, or do you just want to have the magnifier control plus alt plus M and it will show you all the views. Do you want it docked? Do you want it full screen? Do you want it just a lens? And there's what they can follow. Your pointer, your keyboard, your text, and your narrator. Maybe you're somebody who has to have it talk to you. That that's the way you learn. Uh, my uh, oldest grandson, when he had, they had to read a book, he was our tech guru. He said his Grammy told him, you know, taught him everything. Well, didn't have that recorded. And uh, so you can say, again, you within the edges of the screen, you want your text cursor centered on the screen. You know, again, you name it. It's what works for you. People might think you're the strangest person in the world, but you're not. You're just customizing it for yourself. And 
you could have it with a control plus alt caps lock insert caps lock or insert pause stop reading start reading you name it and here's the two here's 200 percent on your magnifier and you can pop the magnifier you know point to something like you had a magnifying glass in your hand and you can use just that view you you can't quite see what's in the upper left hand corner of your monitor and you put your magnifying glass theoretically up in that area and you go whoa i can read this this is great at one of my meetings one time my one of my members raised his hand and he says i think i've got a tip for you that you don't know about and i thought oh i love to learn new things and so he said, uh, click on the button for page width, for Zoom and then page width. And I thought, really interesting. So I did it and I went, oh my gosh, this is so great. And the percentage was 121%. And what it did was it took the entire document and filled the screen with it. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is so cool for me to be able to see this so cl clear. Oh, clarity, uh, your name is Judy. Good God, this is really great. And it was, hey, you know, John, thank you very much. I have used that tip ever since because once I've saved it as page width, uh, I, it comes back with that when I close and open the document, however many times I do. And it's really an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper is with inch all the way around. But uh, it's really just simply that. But on the screen, it goes from side to side, top to bottom. And when I print it out, it's eight and a half by 11. It's standard stuff. And here's a low vision document with that North Texas thing. And here's just Arial 12, just a standard oil, just standard stuff here. And this is Zoom page width. And that's what it looks like when you're working with it. Way cool. And it's always, you know, John Kennedy would say, Judy, I'm using both my monitors now. And I always would say, please don't tell me that again because it always made me feel bad because I have two glass tables and I have my computer on one and my other printers are to the right, color and uh, laser. And uh, that's one of my Toshibas and that's actually a uh, TV screen. Little big, bigger than, you know, your 27 inch was popular at the time. And uh, that was made easy for me to use. And so I didn't want him to tell me about that because he had a table where he could fit everything. And in reality, my table is glass. And to my right is a laser printer and a color printer. And I don't have that kind of capability in what I have normally because that's the way it really looks. I've given up with laptops and I went to you know the larger monitors, but there's my Zoom light and my two printers. And then to the right of that is my big Samsung that kind of sucks big time right about now. See, I had it for a little over a month and I'm hoping if this, something's wrong with the TV, they'll say, oh, We'll come out and fix it for you or bring it down to a Best Buy. And then I will say to myself, I told you never to buy anything at Best Buy again. And, uh, you know, it depends on, you know, what you do. But I know Huey has absolutely fantastic uh, computers that he uses to make fantastic designs and things like that. But I don't. So the narrator. You really don't want to get computer glasses. Your regular eyeballs just work. So you use the narrator. 
and you set it up again to who do you want to listen to? Uh, and do you want to control by your keyboard, by touch, and your mouse? There's over 30 options that you can customize. You could drive yourself crazy checking them all out and thinking, you know, this is the one I really like. I can dictate it. I can edit things. I use Grammarly all the time. And uh, you can, you know, use both things at the same time, all the things at the same time. You can show it. You can minimize it. Again, you are doing it your way. And you can personalize your narrator's voice. You can add more voices. You can change the speed. Maybe you're somebody that just reads slowly. Well, that's the way you set it up, plus or minus. Changing the speed, you can change the pitch, the voice volume, you name it. And low vision and RSI, talk to your computer. Use your voice to control your device. It's settings, ease of access, and speech. You set it up. When this first came out a gazillion years ago, you thought you were going to lose your mind because you just couldn't get it together. And then all of a sudden, it just all came together. And you'd say, okay, Windows key plus control plus S. And I can just talk, start talking to my computer. No problem. No big deal. When it first came out, you were darn lucky if you ever got it to work right. And now it's had grown in what it can do. And it is so simple. And you think to yourself, why did I used to think this would be hard to set up and hard to use? I'm having such a good time using it. And it's making using my uh, computer easier for me to do. And you use your headset, your desktop, whatever it is you want to use. You have the proper microphone placement. You're not guessing. They're saying, this is how you set it up. Make sure it's right for you. It recognizes your voice and off and running you go. And you can use the manual activation mode or voice. Again, your choice. How do you want to use it? What's going to make sense to you? What's going to make it easier for you? And do you want it to run speech recognition every time you start the computer? Yes or no? Okay, your choice. And with Windows 11, everything that I just talked about is right here. It's in, it's not that it's in different places, but it is, you have different choices. They all do the same thing, but you, they've kind of honed Windows 11 down to less items that you have to touch, feel, or whatever. But again, it tells you right there what we just talked about. And there's Bill James, if he were to use this, he would just use white on black. Closed captions, a lot of people, you know, they're into YouTube like crazy. They used closed captions. You have to set that up in Windows. If you don't have it set up in Windows, you're not going to get it in YouTube. Very weird. But those are all the changes you can make set, setting up closed captions. What people need to understand is it's not always set up by the person who puts uh, the closed captions together. You know, op opaque, translucent, semi-transparent, transparent. What do I, what, and you have to check and see what those all do. And it just doesn't jump right out at you and say, oh, Judy, this is the way you set all this stuff up. And when they're talking about, you know, what the default is, and there's the color transparency, style, size, effects, background color, background transparency, you name it. But you can make all of those. You can see the default in the lower left-hand corner that, you know, and the captions look just like that. Well, that's cool for me. Anything small doesn't work for me. Remember, I wear computer glasses. So you set it up in Chrome. 
three dots settings accessibility and it takes you to windows closed caption setting and of course we want it to be live you know do we want custom caption size and style for live captions i would think so we're customizing everything else so we may as well customize all of this firefox requires an extension and edge again three dot menu settings accessibility blah 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 and every time we, we started out our meetings, I would bring my laptop in and uh, the projector and, you know, that good kind of stuff and set it up. And they, my members would go, we're not going to have to listen to that song again, are we? Just take my breath away from uh, Berlin. And I, I just loved it. And they would just groan. And I see, ha, <laughs> ha. Well, at least once a month, I get to listen to my favorite song. What can I tell you? And I'm setting up the closed captions. But their comment was, do we have to listen to that again? And I did. Yes, we're checking to make sure we set the laptop up correctly. Bogus comment, but it worked for me. Hearing with closed captions. Conferencing apps, closed captions. Google Meet, GoToMeeting, Teams, Skype, WebEx, Zoom. Zoom was always the last thing that you could set up, which I found very strange. You can turn up your volume, choose your input device, webcam microphone, OS microphone. You've got advanced sound options. And you can see I'm a visual person. So this kind of tells me what I'm going to set as default and drop the arrow down and see what which ones are going to work for me which ones do i need to set up you know the whole nine yards because i want to be able to hear it for, for me i don't want to hit, have anybody else's narrator set up for me and i you know zoom meetings is the name of the game for me and then your system sounds and your cisco webex is where all the Zoom people came from. So this is know what your computer can do, what sounds good to you, whole nine yards. And what we all talked about, they have three er areas where you can uh, customize it for hearing. And here's Windows 11's, The Dark, Bill James, he just loves that. He loves the small little print too. And here's Windows 11. Touch gestures. Use the on-screen keyboard. Same thing, just displayed differently. You can use a screen reader in Windows 11. There's all the different things that you can use. Xbox, Game Bar, Feedback Hub, you name it. Or you don't. You don't like the new things it does? Okay, fine. It's your computer. You get to set it up how you want to. Your ever popular smartphone. For your eye devices, that includes vision, hearing, physical and motor skills. You just go to settings, control center, customize controls and accessibility. And then you start customizing how you want to use your phone. Here's the iDevice accessibility. And I did not this presentation, but uh, pre this type of presentation. And uh, these are all the things that you can do. And in your iPhone, that these are the categories. These are, the, of course, this is 2021. These are the, the categories that you can do. I went through this and I chose the ones that I use in my OS, which is of course Microsoft. And it's way cool. I don't have to use Braille, but if you use that as some kind of assistant, you can set it up very easily in your phone. No big deal. There's the magnifier again your flat, that ends up being your flashlight. You can sp speak screen 
any text, almost anyone can, somebody can read it to you through your computer speakers. And you speak under finger option to control, control the pace of the reading more precisely. So you can customize everything but the kitchen sink. There's zoom, picture in the picture view, reduces the motion that drives you crazy because it's going by too fast. You can watch videos with detailed audio descriptions of every scene. The ever popular dark mode. Siri can complete the tasks you do every day. You're gonna end up not having to do much of anything if you set your phone up like this. Uh, I devices have an in with hearing aids. It seems like Apple has many more things that they can customize as uh, accommodations for you. And it'll amplify soft sounds or adjust certain frequencies to make media and phone calls sound crisper and clearer through your headphones. And they can cu customize your headphones to your hearing needs just like your vision and all that good kind of stuff. Sound recognition listens for and alerts you to certain sounds and alerts such as a fire alarm or doorbell. How cool is that? Live listen helps you have better conversations in loud places. Sensory alerts, mono audio, and it plays, you got one good ear and one you know kind of crummy ear. And mono audio will play the audio on your left ear or your right ear, whichever one uh, gives you a better audio in both ears. So your right eight, you know, ear is the more precise. So you get that sound in both ears at the same time. Real-time text sends text messages that is being composed. I love this. Rebel, use a finger to scribble letters on display. Turns into time text. I'm telling you, you're not going to have to do hardly anything at all yourself. You just have to think it. And you get your typed text right in front of your very eyeballs. Closed captions, just like everything else. No, noise app tracks the decibel levels of the ambient sounds around you and helps identify when the levels could negatively affect your hearing. I've only had that come up once. I was at a, uh, listening to a uh, concert and I said, oh, look, I get to use this now. And it just said, hey lady, you know, you need to turn the sound down. And, you know, I have gone through many, many, many concerts, music events where, you know, they say, okay, your kids, I want to make sure that you're not going to do something dreadful to your ears because you're listening to it uh, too loud. And I thought, oh, if I were still going to concerts like that, I would think that was the greatest thing that came down the pike. And you can speak screen, speak selections, typing feedback, predictive text, can help by adding an auditorium co component to text. Little bit of this, little bit of that. You can navigate with a single tap. You can control your swipe. Tap help makes it very easy to interact with your favorite apps. Back tap opens the favorite app, assistive tap, picture tap doesn't work for you, swap them with a gesture that does or create a touch that is all your own and nobody will ever ask to borrow your phone again. Touch accommodation, use on-screen accessibility, hardware keyboard, dictation, I can, you know, chat with my iPhone, predictive text, I mean, I use Gmail, but it's interesting because right in front of your very eyes, it starts finishing your uh, sentence for you. Gmail has that for me, and it's fun. And then we have the emergency call, the medical get you know help. I need something, and we get here in uh, California. Well, it's just you know. Uh, I know not Bill, but uh, Glenda, Glendora's pres past president 
Um, he lives in the Dora area and he stops every once in a while, somebody out and about on this two lane road up in the hills above Glendora, all those places on the foothills. And all of a sudden they roll down the hill and they lose their access and there's no Wi-Fi and they'll know you, find you and get rescue you. That happens all the same time in one specific area up in the foothills. And there you're down at the bottom in the foothills right there. And you're going all the way down there and you're going to go, oh, good grief. I'm going to be, this is going to be it. Nobody knows where I am. You know, they're not going to be able to help me. And people are always getting help with um, no Wi-Fi. And they live to tell about it. So it's way cool. I watch hard fall detection. That's one of the things that I really liked about it. Because I figured that by the time my kids would know their mo mother was missing, the cats would have eaten me. What can I tell you? And tap on the wrist, sounds an alarm, displays an alert, choose to contact emergency services, dismiss alert by pressing the digital crown, tapping close in the upper left corner or tapping, I'm okay. Really, really I am. And of the area where I live, this is happening all the time. And I like the iPhone because you didn't have to go someplace else to find what you needed in the rescue mode or whatever. With the Android, most of the time you had to go to the Google Play Store and download an accessibility suite that will talk back to you. The screen reader converts text to speech, braille support, more languages, edit commands with braille display, edit gestures with Braille keyboard. And I mean, your life is being lived easily for you. And with the iPhone, it's just all in there. You don't, you don't have to think about, now what oh, accessibility features should I go to the Play Store and download? I liked it that it just happened and I can do it and it would be no problem at all. So we got some peripherals. Uh, this was one of the mice that uh, for accessibility, this is the left click, the right click, and you just put your hand on there, the palm of your hand, and just lightly there, and that's how you move your mouse around. And uh, I had this to show because the first uh, class of each time I taught the class was, I taught it three times a year fall, winter, and spring. And so I had a box of stuff to show people. And I had that because I started out teaching. I had the uh, preschool uh, kids, three years old, four years old, and then into kindergarten. And I had all this stuff to share with them, just like the little guys in the kindergarten would share with me. So I was used to sharing. And so I had a lot of the stuff that pertains to the presentation. They got to see it, you know, in real time in class and because it was real class. And I had one guy at a senior uh, housing area and he was quite the computer user. And he was one of the ones that encouraged me to come and teach the class there. Every Thursday afternoon, we did something that the people who showed up in the uh, computer lab, we did. Because the people who were there, this is what they were interested in. And I showed that peripherals to the people that were in class the very first night, Monday nights and Thursday nights, twice a week. And uh, I would have a share box and I would pass things around. I had a um, box of all different kinds of mice 
like this, so they'd say, and I said, I'm showing this to you. You might not ever have a problem where you would need this, but you, now you know there is something like this. And I said, it might not ever, you know, get to the level where you need something like this, but at least you know about it now. And you know that if your mousing skills are just horrible, you know, there's a very nice ergonomically one that looks like this and so on. So I had these kinds of things. I started out with the eight inch floppy and then the five and a half and then the three and so on. And what I could do down to, you know, the end of what was happening in my world when I stopped teaching uh, tech classes is uh, that was all. This is what, and then it went to CDs, and then it went to this, and then it went to that, and then, you know, and it was just to familiarize the people in the class what they looked like, how the name got changed from eight to, you know, five and a half to three, blah, blah, blah. And it was just for their reference. If somebody was talking about this, or you remembered something that I said, and I, I did my own curriculum with my own screenshots and all this good kind of stuff, and they would at least know about it and that there is an accommodation out there. You might not ever use it, but you know about it and you can pass the information on. And one of the guys who encouraged me to, you know, come and teach also in, in addition to Golden Oak Adult School, um, that just that class once a week uh, that the attendees wanted specifically for the information. And it was invaluable for them. And this guy said he came in after he was, you know, a little bit more than he could manage. And so he spent most of his time in the handouts with the screenshots. And so he worked on those, even though he wasn't in class. And, uh, it was invaluable to them because they, he was going blind and he was on his way. Well, number one, I, you know, knew about the page that you could, you know, get the access to where they could find it in my notes. I would go over to, you know, work on somebody's computer or whatever, and they would have the handouts. The, the first night of class, they had uh, well over 50 handouts because I did my own curriculum, like my oldest daughter, an uh, AP history teacher is. And uh, so it was invaluable, might not be for them, might not be for you, but you know somebody who needs this kind of help and that it, it is out there for people to use. And here is my favorite ergonomic mouse, is this little skin-friendly, detachable ball for easy cleaning, skin-friendly surface, back and forth button. It's my Logitech Ergo M575 wireless trackball mount. I love those. And it's thumb control, precision, smooth tracking, ergonomic comfort design. And I'm all into ergonomics of having things work like that. And let me tell you, using the mouse with the ball on the side like that, totally ergonomically co correct. Have such a good feeling when you're using something like this. And here's other ones. And said uh, past president of the Glendora group, he also is losing his eyesight. And uh, that's a keyboard that, look how big it is compared to the regular keyboard. And it's whatever. It's absolutely fantastic. I got my first one at the Braille store down in downtown LA, and that was pricey, but back in the day, they really weren't that much. And he, like the guy at the uh, senior housing area, they are able to use their computers much longer 
than if the only thing they had to deal with was that black and white one down there. The yellow makes it easier for them to see things, use things, you name it. And he's got to be the biggest fan of Chromebooks now than ever could happen. And the keyboard for a Chromebook is smaller and not all keys are on the Chromebooks. And so he found these uh, online at Amazon. He said, Amazon does have everything. And so he got the stickers and he put, stuck them on his keys and everything. And on the left-hand side, uh, that, like I said, not all the keys are there. So he typed them up in high visibility paper and stuff like that. And uh, set all the ones on the left-hand side. If he happened to, you know, needed a shortcut for something and they didn't have it on the Chromebook anymore, he created a list of shortcuts that will help him. And, uh, you know, he just thought that was so advantageous to him. He, life went on as far as he was concerned. And there's the difference in the size and the difference that they look like. And they're up at the top, there's, you know, keyboard shortcuts for a whole th a bunch of stuff. And it worked for him and it let him keep going. The guy at the uh, senior center where he, where he lived, uh, he said this was the greatest thing that ever happened because he just loves the Chromebook. And he finally found that, you know, he could access everything that he loved about the Chromebook. And he just thought that was too cool for words. And I still use that keyboard, the one on the bottom, the black one. And uh, I don't use a Chromebook. I'm just a plain old Windows kid. And, but he used that keyboard with his computer. He used it with his Chromebook. And he, both of them said, it was the greatest thing that ever came down the pike because they were both just about ready to give up the ghost on not being able to use uh, the keyboard and keep going. And there are his stickers. And here's one of his many Chromebooks that he has purchased. He doesn't have good luck with computers. He's always getting new ones, but there's his little cheat sheet on the left-hand side and down in the right-hand corner, something he added. And then there's all the high visibility yellow that he cut out and put them on his keyboard. And then here's where he can just use that device in the lower right-hand corner of the one on the left that he can just poke. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to use his fingers or anything. He just pokes and it works fine for him. This is a regular ergonomic one. Logitech. I love the purple one. If you're color coordinated and you have uh, one that looks like that, uh, you can wear your purple shirt and <laughs> change your keyboard out. But if you'll notice the uh, way your hands are, the ergonomically correct, where the green lines are and the green dots, and there's the normal one. That's, you know, the guy at the housing center. That's what he was doing, and it was driving him crazy. He was fading fast. Back in the day, we heard about Dragon. Dragon, actually. And they were $200 for that. They still is a very expensive product. But... People have said, well, it's actually, it's a relative of Bill James. And his relative has always used that. And it was 200 bucks. Well, we usually didn't pay that much for software, so to speak. And uh, it's still expensive, a bit more normal than a regular keyboard is. And he went through the Windows 10 uh, 
accessibility stuff that we just went through. And he said, oh, that is so much easier for my cousin to use the app additions, so to speak, that are the software that lets you talk to you. And so she no more, longer had to pay $200. She uses the one that is added to the uh, Microsoft Office apps, so to speak. Worked out wonderful for her that she liked the product that can shipped with Windows and Office. There's also monitor adjuster diagonally. If you can't afford a really expensive, expensive, remember this is 21, what my pictures are, um, they will be a lot less to magnify with a device that just clips on. And hearing aids and Bluetooth, of course, he was using a hearing aid. I'm on the Senior Center Advisory Board for our local center. And a guy who knows almost nothing about software or how to this, he sells real estate for Pete's sake. And he had the Apple has patented specific Bluetooth connectivity with hearing aids and uh, they can communicate directly with the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, iOS devices. What's missing there? Nothing for the Android stuff. And they have it now. They have uh, the uh, iOS mostly uh, have a brand of software that teams with it. And come to find out the real estate guy that absolutely knows hardly nothing about accessibility uses the same one that uh, our president from the Glendora group uses. And they get their name on them and not necessarily do the uh, apps that are already built into the iPhone. They're not. You have to go someplace and get the app with an Android. And uh, they both have said they are able to keep on using their technology because they both happen to have Apple phones. And but they have the uh, all the apps built in. They don't have to go looking for them any place. And it's something called the Opticon. And again, I got such a kick out of it. One is Mr. Tech up the gazoo. The other guy sells real estate, knows absolutely nothing about that. You know, when he goes out to uh, show houses, he has to take somebody with him that maybe they t speak a little bit too low. So he, you know, works along with somebody to help him, you know, sell the real, the real estate house whatever they're putting in, it's all together. And that helps them with, they have a basic knowledge of how to use software, but nothing specific, you know, that's, oh, gee, wow, whoo. But it comes along with his windows. He already knows how to use, you know, Microsoft products. And this is great, but they don't, they both said independently for whatever, do not lose the charger. And the guy who is uh, the selling a broker, he, you know, put, he, Rick, hangs it around his neck. He's always dressed nicely. And the other guys, just the use and me's of the world. And he, again, knows all about windows and things like that. And he loves it. And they are both happier than happy. And even for the real estate person, it was an easy learning curve for him because he had some basic knowledge. And there's uh, the devices, one for each ear, and then he can put his device under his tie. He could put it under his shirt. Uh, the other guy wears jeans, tennis shoes, 
casual clothes. And again, you can use it for everything. Alexa and Google has home assistance and uh, seven commands to know when using Alexa for the disabled, Alexa for seniors net, accessibility features on Google Nest or home devices, um, Google Nest. So you've got tons of help out there. And let me know if you have any questions. And there you all are. Do any of you use any of those devices? Joe Nowak. I, I use a backlit yeah. keyboard that I love. A what? A backlit keyboard. Oh, isn't that a gamers? No, I just uh, for just to, to be able to see the letters. I'm, I'm not a touch typist. I got to look at the keyboard. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to know about the um, the five shift click, whatever, where you hit the shift key five times and you say that it uh, will, the sticky keys, basically. Mm -hmm. I understand how the sticky keys can work with a shift and a letter. What about when you have a three key shortcut like control alt delete or windows shift um and letter s for the snip tool or control shift and t to recall a uh a, a window or a tab that uh on your browser that you accidentally closed um how does that work with the uh sticky key do you know I don't use sticky keys. I have large hands and long fingers. Okay. <laughs> and I've been around so long, you know, way back to. Yeah. Well, I don't use it, but I'm just, stuff. I'm just curious because when it first, when it first came out, you know, it made a lot of sense, but now we have three key shortcut keys. And I was wondering how it, how it adjusts to that, or if there is an adjustment. That would be an excellent question for Google, unless Huey knows the answer, somebody else does. I, I find, do not. Yeah, I, I've never used those either, because again, I've been doing this since yeah. the beginning of time, like Huey has. And what we started out with, uh, all those, you know, word perfect, remember those little strips? Oh, yeah. And you had there, and you had them taped together, and they stood up on the back uh, you know, uh, yeah. all all strips of things, and that would be shift and alt and control and the regular one. They all did something different. And I just always thought that was way cool, and that's what I used. And then you got starting with the shift and the alt and the control and blah, blah, and you were just so excited not to have those pieces of paper up there on the back of your keyboard. I, that's what I used at work all the time. It's back in the day I worked. But when I, and when I ask Google a question, I ask it in plain English in a sentence. And I, nine, 90, well, actually 100% of the time I get the answer if I asked Joe a question, he'd just say, blah, 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 and this is what you do. And uh, I usually get exactly the answer that I need. So it all depends on what works for you. John, from my group, I thought I died and gone to heaven when he told me that tip. <laughs> I didn't know that and I thought it was so cool. But I just, you know, Google's my friend. Tom, Tim. See you next Wednesday. In the beginning, uh, you were talking about carpal tunnel syndrome. In 2016 and 2017, I had a neurologist who thought I had carpal tunnel syndrome. So I decided to go see a, a reputable uh, hand surgeon in the area. And he says, that's not your problem. Your problem is osteoarthritis. Wonderful. That <laughs> sounds ugly. 
What do they do for you? Uh, there isn't a lot you can do about osteoarthritis, but I found a uh, uh, blue emu uh, two or three times a day for about a month. Uh, seemed to take care of the problem uh, in my hands, but now it's in my lower back uh, affecting my sciatic nerve. Oh, that is really crummy. Well, osteoarthritis attacks your entire skeletal structure. Wow. It's like having a, a, a real rough file, like a rasp file, uh, for uh, quickly removing uh, a, a large amount of uh, wood material. And uh, uh, so it affects uh, muscle, uh, tendons, ligaments, nerves, etc. cetera. Hmm. Judy, Kathleen Sneed, Sneed has a question. Saw that. Uh, yes. Uh, the slide that you did before your last slide had two references that you can seek further help. And I was trying to copy it and wasn't quick enough. So oh, you're going to get a copy of this on your website. Oh, good. All right. Thank you so much. Remember who I work with, seniors and preschoolers? <laughs> <laughs> Not hearing any. I want to thank you, Judy. What a great presentation. And, and I can't imagine how you did this with hardly any well, I, what do you have? You don't have anything but what you're talking to us on. But you did a wonderful job, and we truly appreciate it. What I gave you was just part of my class. There you go. There See, you are. Seniors like to keep learning. I certainly do. If I can learn, if I can figure out. Yeah. I just love for you to be able to see my TV over here that was screwing everything else in my computer world away. It's just going like this. <laughs> High visibility green and two strips of... Fuchsia. Oh, well, you still have that to cope with, but we thank you so much for a great presentation. Truly, truly yeah. wonderful. And well, before, like, before we leave, go ahead. I'm just going to say, that's when my member, and he was no, he knew beyond a shadow of doubt I was going to know what he was talking about. And no, I wasn't. I thought what he said was one of the great things that ever came down the pike. Yeah. And the pike is in Long Beach, California, by the way.